Namaha and Swagatam. Welcome back. What you see in front of you is what's called the Sanskrit syllabary. It's a thing of sheer beauty, if you ask me. Uh, it's way more than just like an alphabet. It's kind of like how the periodic table works in chemistry, actually. Each row means something. Each column means something phonetically, so that based on where a uh, we find a sound located on the chart, we can say different things about how that sound is supposed to be pronounced. This is going to be the focus of our first three weeks, actually, to learn how to use this chart, to learn how to say each sound, how to write each sound, how to describe each and every sound. In this video, let's go through the basics of Sanskrit phonetics. Uh, and then in the next few short clips, we'll go row by row uh, in the chart and figure it out, basically. Now, to start with, uh, there's two kinds of sounds in Sanskrit. There's vowels and consonants. In Sanskrit, these are called swara and vyanjanas. Swara, vowels, vyanjanas, consonants. On the phonology chart, which you can also find online at ubcsanskrit.ca, you're going to notice that we've grouped them separately. The vowels are on the left side in their own group. The consonants are on the right. At its most basic, Sanskrit is made up of what are called syllables, uh, groups of consonants and vowels. These are called aksharas in Sanskrit, syllables aksharas. Aksharas can be of three types. One type is that it could be just a vowel, like the vowel U, for example. That's a akshara by itself. Uh, it could be a consonant followed by a vowel, like gu, where you have the consonant g, k, and then the vowel u, u. Right? Finally, an akshara can be what uh, can be in a CVC format, consonant vowel consonant, like for example ku. That's a K plus a U plus a P, Kup. Right? In this video, uh, let's now turn to the vowels, understand how those works, and then in the next videos, we'll look at the consonants row by row, uh, how they combine with vowels to make our aksharas, our syllables. In terms of vowels, <clears throat> the first thing you notice is that vowels are further classified as being either short vowels or long vowels. Pay attention to this distinction. It's really, really important. Uh, South Asian speakers are really keen on it. They hear the difference. Uh, and maybe it's the most common mistake that non-native speakers that Westerners make. Uh, they make the long vowel too short, the short vowel too long, uh, and then everyone cringes. So be sure to practice. Uh, I'll keep kind of pointing it out and I'll say, make your short vowels short, make your long vowels long. It's never a problem if you make a vowel too long, actually. We won't really mind. But if you make your longs too short and your shorts too long, it'll, it'll hurt. Uh, the other thing you'll notice on the chart is that there's way more vowels in Sanskrit than we find in English. In English, we just have A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. In Sanskrit, we have many, many more. We have short and long, U uh, and A. Ah. U uh, and A. Ah. Then we have short and long eyes, e and e. Then we have short and long u, u and u. Then we have some special vowels. In Sanskrit, there's uh, what's called a vocalic r and a vocalic l. These are basically pronounced the same way as r and l in, would be in Sanskrit, but using a flap rather than a trill sound. So for vocalic r, we get r. For, uh, for long vocalic R, we're going to get ru. Basically, as you might be hearing, there's just a little extra U added at the end, a kind of extension of the U to make it long. Uh, the letter is actually very rare in Sanskrit. Uh, it's not as rare, though, as the vocalic L, which is pronounced r. Basically, it's a quick flippy flap to make the l, where a, a little U is added at the end. L. Absolutely the rarest vowel in the syllabary. It's found only in basically in one word, the verbal root gloop, which means to imagine or conceptualize. And it gets uh, articulated in the word kalpana. Some of you may have heard that word before, imagination. So these are what are called the simple vowels. U, A, I, I, U, 
and l. Uh, finally, we have what are called the diphthongs or complex vowels. They're the combos of the simple vowels and they're considered to be long. Uh, first, we have a, which is a combination of a and e. A. Then we have a, which is a combination of a and e. A. Now, be careful that you don't pronounce the first a as a or the second a or a as a. a. They, they sometimes do that in Hindi, like he. Sometimes you'll hear uh, non native speakers say a instead of the a. Uh, I'm going to be correcting you on these. Don't worry. Finally, we have the complex uh, combination of a plus u, which becomes o. Then we have a plus u, you get o. Be careful not to pronounce this like the Hindi a, uh, or Westerners say ow. Right? Ow is what your ears feel when you hear people say ow instead of o. Anyway, there you have it. Those are the vowels of the syllabary. Take a moment here to go to the ubcsanskrit.ca site, practice saying the vowels, practice some of the words with each vowel. Uh, you'll hear my dad recite them, actually. Uh, see if you can absorb them and try to internalize the words. Then in our next videos, we'll turn to the consonant side of the chart and go through each of the rows that you see. These are the classes or vargas as they're called. One by one, we'll go through each one and we'll learn how to pronounce them all properly, perfectly. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Dhanyavadaha Punarmilama.